and I got to hang out with Usher. Usher and his whole fam. So, and when I say his whole fam, I mean his actual blood family, not like his friends that he calls his fam. My name is Jade. I am a person. I am currently volunteering with Peace Corps, living in Cambodia, and so I'm coming at you from inside my mosquito net. There's going to be a lot of noises. Actually, today is relatively quiet because it is a holiday, so people seem to be a little less loud today. But yes. Um, I just want to start off this video by saying I had a dream last night that I was hanging out at Usher's house and I got to sing karaoke for Alicia Keys, uh, what is that song? If I Ain't Got You? Yeah, I was belting it and it was like every lyric, I was, it was very vivid, I was really getting it and sang much better in my dream than in real life so that was a good plus. And I got to hang out with Usher. Usher and his whole fam. So, and when I say his whole fam, I mean his actual blood family, not like his friends that he calls his fam. Yeah, it was like his actual fam. So, my host dad just turned on some music, so I guess we're having some background music to this video. So I wanted to talk today about my top five books that I read this year. I had a lot of time, especially at the beginning of the year, to get reading done while um, being in Cambodia and so I wanted to kind of reflect on what my favorite books were. So I'm going to start with my fifth favorite and go all the way up to my first favorite. I actually read uh, quite a few books this year that I didn't like which is weird for me. I'm usually not that hard to please but, um, but I also read a lot that I did like. So number five it is called Eastern Body, Western Mind, Psychology and the Chakra System as a Path to the Self by An Anadea, Anadea? Ludith. I don't know how to pronounce that, so correct me if I'm wrong. I don't so I had been recommended this book for quite a few years, and it was definitely one that I was interested in reading, so I was very excited to get to read it this year and she basically goes through each of the chakras and talks about not only about how the energy from that point helps us um, in our mental spiritual life but how it affects our physical self as well and one thing and so one thing that i really liked about this book is that she does a really really great job of talking about how the system works as a whole and how each of the points the energy points in your body yeah she talks about the system as a whole and how different changes in certain points of the system can affect the whole flow of energy and I thought that was something that I had never seen before in the other things that I had read and I really enjoyed that and another thing that I really liked about this book is she also so she goes through each chakra but um, when she does so she talks about how and when that certain point and that kind of awareness of energy is developed throughout your life and so basically she starts as like as a child as newborns as babies and then she works her way up to adulthood through each of the chakras starting with the, the sacral point and going up and the things that she kind of discussed through each of those developmental stages was so on point and it really it was a neat way to look at development human development, adolescent development that I had never really looked at before and I very much enjoyed that. So my fourth favorite book that I read this year was The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, A Counterintuitive Approach to Living a Good Life by Mark Manson. 
this book I think is basically it's a self-help book for people who don't normally like self-help books and that's how I would categorize it although I really love self-help books so that's not me but he has a way of writing very simply very straight to the point and kind of no nonsense I didn't 100% agree with everything in the book but I really appreciated his way of delivery and I also really appreciated the messages that he did have um, he really talked a lot about how like learning to not give a fuck like there's no such thing as not giving a fuck there's always gonna be things that you care about and there always should be things that you care about um, but you just have to choose where you're gonna expend your energy and he brought in a lot of um, like I think he mentioned like theories from Buddhism quite a few times and um, one of those was this idea that there's always going to be problems and that humans actually thrive on problems and they like problems and that's how we we find meaning in life is by solving problems and the goal is to learn how to tackle problems that you don't have control over and learn how to manage how much energy you give to those problems and at the same time learn how to pick and choose other problems that you do have control over and so I I, th I really enjoy this book I definitely think that I will read it again because it is something that I really struggle with um, as far as like caring too much about things that I sh that I don't need to give that much energy to my number three favorite book that I read this year is called Smoke Gets in Your Eyes and Other Lessons from the Crematory by Caitlin Doty. So I stumbled upon this book through Prime Reading because they do like the free Prime downloads onto your Kindle and I definitely wasn't seeking it out by any means. And it's basically a memoir and um, it's about this woman, Caitlin, and her kind of journey through starting to work in a crematory. Crematar crematarium? Crematorium? Crematar I don't know, she burns bodies. There's a lot of really great research. She knows her stuff. They're like about death, about how the body decomposes, about ways that different cultures approach death and honor the dead around the world. And that was very, very interesting to read but also it really, it kind of like opened up my eyes because I feel like, well that was one of the main points in the book was that in America, um, the way that we, in the mainstream death, uh, death industry of America, the way that we deal with death mo in the modern age is so far removed from the way that humans normally have dealt with death for thousands and thousands of years on other areas of the earth and um, that was a really really big realization and something that I think that if you can handle the the morbidity like it is a very intense book there are some scenes that are very difficult to read but if you can handle the morbidity I would recommend that you read this book I think that every person should have to read this book or at least one like it um, because death it's think that this book is basically a giant dose of reality as far as death is concerned and I very much enjoyed it so Caitlin is also she has a YouTube channel um, I will link it below she is awesome she does so much great education on the death industry and on death and dying and she is I think it's called eco death activist she's an eco death activist so my second favorite book that I read this year is a novel uh, purity by Jonathan Franzen so I had never read anything by Jonathan Franzen before this and I haven't read anything after or I haven't read anything since but he is an amazing writer um, this book basically circles around maybe four or five characters and it begins with this girl named Purity and her search to find her father and then you find out as the book goes on kind of how all of the main characters are connected and 
the and it switches narrative between um, perspectives of different characters, um, like first person perspectives, and I think it's first person, yeah. But it's oh man, I couldn't put it down. I could not put this book down. It is a page turner. I wanted to know so much about the characters. There is one um, beef, I guess, that I have with this book is I did get a, the vibe that a lot of the female characters were portrayed in kind of a more, like, they, the female characters were less rounded and more stereotypical than the male characters, and I also felt like the male characters, um, the, the I didn't really appreciate the way that all of the female characters kind of treated the male characters, um, so it, was, it, it came off as a little bit sexist to me as a woman reading it, but that being said, it was written so well that I... I still really, really enjoyed it for other parts and other things about it. Um, I really enjoyed the storyline and I think that, yeah, Jonathan has such a way of when he does want to write um, a complete character, a complex character, he does it so well and in, and it's just such a, t a page turner and um, I, would, I would definitely recommend Purity by Jonathan Franzen. My number one book that I read this year is called The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. And if you can see at the top of the book there. So it is a series of short stories that are somewhat connected and they all are told from the perspective of American soldiers in the war in Vietnam. So it's either during the war or after the war. And it's not in chronological order, it kind of shifts back and forth. And I had actually read one of these short stories in college when I was taking a fiction writing class. And I really enjoyed it, but I didn't think much of it. I didn't seek out anything else by him. But I didn't actually, I had forgotten that that story came from this book. And so I stumbled upon it and I thought, well, I don't really normally I'm not normally drawn to war books about the war, um, but I will check it out. And it, he's a beautiful writer, and he actually was in the war in Vietnam. And so a lot of, he, he's pulling from personal experience as well. And one of the main themes of the book is kind of this blur between reality and subjectivity, and he writes that so well in the it's so he basically he presents that theme not only in the words that he's choosing but in the way that it's written there are so many times in the book where you're trying to figure out what is true is the narrator reliable is not only is the narrator reliable but is is what is being written is this actually something that happened to the author or is it a fiction and I think that's kind of what he was going for. He like wanted you to be in that space of not knowing. And um, something that I kind of got out of it was that he, the, the idea that the experience of war is so traumatic and so unique to each individual person, but also like to, to the group of people working alongside each other um, in through this, you know, terrible traumatic experience, the the realities of war are so raw and so almost too real that they somehow can mix in with with the personal experience, and the personal experience, the subjectivity, the emotions that you're feeling when you are in these these situations when you are in the grips of war and after when you're dealing with PTSD and things like that, that subjectivity can be so grand that it can influence how you um, perceive reality. And so those two things are kind of creating this gray area. And it was very, yes, it, it it was so good and so well written and I just had tears just streaming and I was in a taxi. I couldn't put it down and I was like 
just like bumping around and like crying and oh it's so good um thank you for watching i've always wanted to do um a video or a blog post about books that i have read and i because I love talking about them and I am really glad that I did because it it felt good I love I love talking about books and shows and podcasts and all that stuff so maybe I'll make more of these I don't know but um, yeah definitely let me know if you have any questions about any of the books or any recommendations in the comments and yeah thank you have a wonderful new year I thought video to some about pet Maybe I should just not.